So as I think the I Ching predicted for me um, a couple of days ago, um, I've gone from a period of uh, supposed great power to a period of unbelievable creativity. And um, yeah, like ideas just bubbling up in my head, a high concept thoughts of this, that and the other. And yeah, it's been a whale of a time and a fantastic ride so far. And um, yeah, I've, uh, uh, I started this, um, this poetry journal thing, this online journal for poetry on WordPress the, um, the other day. And um, it's called anonymouspoets.co.uk. And um, it's sort of semi-inspired by Tom of Bedlam's song, this uh, this poet, uh, this poem written by uh, an inmate of uh, Bedlam Hospital or Bethlehem Hospital uh, in the 17th or 18th century, I think probably, um, who, which strictly speaking, is not an anonymous poem. It's called Tom of Bedlam's song, written by someone who probably didn't know their surname, and who um, yeah misspelled Bethlehem as Bedlam. I don't know if that's sort where of the name like Bedlam actually comes from as an appellation given to that hospital. But yeah, it's um and I was trying to like sponsor like these people's voices, people in secure mental hospitals, uh, people in prisons, homeless people, asylum seekers, so on, those marginalized people in society, or people from the most deprived backgrounds in society as well, I think. And um so yeah, really like sponsor them. And they can write anonymously or not. And um, it was inspired by reading the rather good poetry of uh, this poet, this homeless poet in Bath, selling his work on the street. I encountered him the other day, and I was really glad that I did encounter him, because, um, yeah, I, I needed to, I think, probably get permission to publish it from him. So it's, yeah, well, I should anyway, I should probably get permission. It'd be the decent thing to do if I can do that. So, yeah, it's, um, I did get his permission. Uh, by word of mouth, I don't have his poetry yet, it's with someone else, but, um, guess what his fucking name was? Tom. Of all, of all things that his name could be, it's fucking Tom. Now, like, that's the sort of thing Carl Jung would refer to as synchronicity, as, like, these odd little coincidences that pop up in life that tell you or imply to you that um, this is the right path, or something is worth pursuing, I think. And yet, like in this contest between pantheism and panentheism, and divine intervention possibly, and the universe having an incredibly subtle, but no less potent intellect underpinning it, or it forms part of some divine cosmic intellect. And who knows, in the large scale structure of the universe looks somewhat like a brain, or somewhat like the, the structure of neurons in the brain. And I think of like transmission of energy within a medium. Da, 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 da. I don't know. It's more or less the answer, I think. Like, do I know the, the mind of God, the brain of God? Ah. <sighs> all things happen, all history, all time, all space. <sighs> like, well, obviously, I, I couldn't. But, I mean, no one could. No human could. I mean, well, only God could, frankly. No entity could, other than God. But, um, yeah, I, I, like, think about is a crazy rush of creativity. And think of, like, founding a, a pantheist religious organisation formed of councils of all different representatives of all the world's religions, sponsoring a religious plurality and pluralism. I'm saying you can be like a pantheist Sikh Muslim or something like that uh, Pi kid from Life of Pi. He was a, a Buddhist, a Christian, and a Muslim. Like, yeah. uh, a Hindu, a Christian, and a Muslim. Excuse me. Like, why not? And I think, like, in his grown-up self, he's, like, roughly a pantheist, basically. <laughs> and, yeah, like, you do... Um, unfortunately, you get religious dogmatism. And um, it's a very good idea, I think, to try and cut through dogmatism see where the similarities are, see where the overlaps are, see where the contradictions are or seem to be, and see how it all sort of fits together into something that might give a potent understanding of the world and might solve this um, this somewhat intractable, possibly, problem that we're all born with, maybe, 
about how to come to peace with the universe. And for some people, that, that is a lifelong struggle. And it, in, in my case, it's involved uh, you know, learning a huge amount about physics and the underlying, you know, fundamental nature of how reality operates or attempting to, to find that understanding. And that's been a huge part of, I guess, my spirituality, actually. And I, I consider science yeah, a form of nature worship. And I think I identify as a pantheist, someone who equates God with the universe. And maybe I even allow the possibility of panentheism to some extent. And thinking that like with um, like this Tom a Bedlam stuff, and meeting a homeless poet on the streets called Bloody Tom. Right. Just think. I don't know. But then again, it could be this, this friend on Facebook who has my poetry. Maybe there's sneakiness going on there. And like she's informed him about me and he's been in like Bath regularly. And she's like regularly passing because she lives in Bath. And she's like, say your name's Tom. <laughs> For whatever reason she would. But and again, like, would he agree to that? Why would he? And like, would it, what, what, what would it help to do that? As opposed to Dan or Nick or Ian or Fred or what have you. Could it be that the fucking dude's called Tom? <laughs> like, sorry, is that sort of thing that makes people believe in God? It really is. People, and people do like line this sort of thing up, these synchronicities. And like there is also a chance that it is just a coincidence. And that the probabilities in nature like do occasionally express themselves in just profoundly odd ways. Tom is not an uncommon name. It's, you know, it's not like he's called um, Ursulon Rex <laughs> or, or Leopold or Michaelmas. <laughs> you know, it could just be a weird coincidence. But fuck me, those do happen in life. And that is one of the weirder coincidences I've, I've come across recently. <laughs> like, will I allow the, the possibility of pantheism? Yes. I would. Okay, I would, yes. And, um, you know, like, what, what is religious syncretism or spiritual syncretism? Or, like, trying to find a unified sort of moral way of thinking, which we do all need, I think, in life. Like, I like this Buddhist middle way stuff, you know, avoidance of extremes, avoidance of polar... or you know, walking the middle line between polar opposites. Right, livelihood, right, speech, right, thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, yeah, like, I see a lot of value in the Ten Commandments, like, that shall have no other gods before me. That is sort of implying pantheism, I think. And I don't, at least. And I don't think, um, yeah, like, I don't think if you put nature as your god, yeah, you could have any other gods before nature. You could maybe have gods after that. And um, deities who you identify as facets of nature or spirits representing facets of nature like Poseidon god of the sea or Zeus god of power mm. that sort of subverting the power of the almighty a little bit or like the king of the Greek gods the thunderer it's in charge of thunder I guess like lightning and stuff no. pretty cool god not bad pretty sweet not the almighty though you know, so, and there's nothing really to stop having a syncretist attitude towards Greco-Roman religion and uh, uh, Judeo-Christian monotheism, I don't think. And, like, not worshipping idols. Like, hmm, do you need to necessarily worship Zeus or, or uh, Poseidon? Like, in... The Greco-Roman tradition, I was like, they weren't exactly, like, worshipped, I don't think, as such, by most of the population. It just formed part of their tradition, and they sort of, like, give a libation 
to Zeus, or does that count as worship? Like, what? Oh, God, I don't know how to Google up what worship means in the Oxford English Dictionary. It's a little go to of mine. Like, trying to like incorporate accepted definitions of terms to sort of find um, where worship definition. If there's um, a positive definite exclusion of syncretist possibilities in a certain respect. The feeling or expression of reverence and adoration, adoration for a deity. Yeah, giving a libation would be reverence, wouldn't it? Um, idol worship, though. I want to just check this. Idol worship. Definition. Here we go. Idolatry. Worship of a cult image or idol as though it were a god. Oh, it's worship of an image as though it were a god. Okay. Well, that, like, that's a bit stupid, frankly, is it not? Like, yeah, the golden calf, famously, and, like, you know, like, you're, yeah, you're, you're taking your eye off the real god. And, you know, the, the incredible potency and extent and um, you know, profundity of the human situation if you're merely worshipping images. I think. And graven images, that's like child pornography, isn't it? Like, none of those. And there's like lesser graven images, like snuff films and that sort of shit. But, uh, yeah, see, like, it's possible with Greco Roman pagan and uh, Christian, I think, syncretistically. Uh, and, you know, St. Augustine did the, um, the Greco Roman tradition no favours at all. So, so, um, to insult of God. I don't think he denied their existence quite though. And um yeah, Christianity I think like at its worst has become like a rather an insular, inward looking faith and doesn't really seek union with other and it, it fractures very easily now anyway. That's sort of a problem. And yeah, uniting religions I think is relatively good. I'm so pluralism religion, but I'm gonna end this video now.